Hi, I'm Darren and welcome to Level Up Double E Lab. Well, that odd sounding audio intro was done for a purpose. I'm gonna be building a two-tone audio generator. Let's get started. Going back to my multi-part series on my home-built HF transmitter, in episode number 18, I showed my attempts at making a two-tone IMD measurement. One of the items in my test setup was a two-tone audio generator, and I barely mentioned it. Here's what it looks like. I put it together from parts that I had on hand, perfboard style. It worked well enough for me to complete that episode, but it did have several shortcomings that I'll talk about in a minute. But first, let's take a quick look at the design. I started with this circuit created by Peter Ratchow. It uses two transistors and various resistors and caps to make two phase delay oscillators. In Peter's design, these two pots provide the controls for balance and volume, but I went another way and modified the output to drive two op amps instead. One op amp provides some adjustable gain, while the second is just an output buffer. I also included two toggle switches to let me select each tone individually. And like I said, it worked well enough for the measurements that I made for that episode. But I'm going to be revisiting that transmitter design to try and improve the IMD performance, and that's where I get into some shortcomings of this little guy. First, I have no control over the magnitude difference between the two signals. You'd think you'd just set them to be equivalent and leave them alone forever. But from what I've read, on occasion you may need to adjust one relative to the other if, for example, you were testing a circuit with an uneven passband. Now, Peter's original design does have a balance control, but in my haste, I'd left it out. More significantly though, this design does not have any filtering on the output of the oscillators. They do appear to be fairly clean sinusoids on the scope, but a much better practice would be to add low pass filters to knock down the second and higher harmonics. You can't really see those on a scope, you'd need a spectrum analyzer for audio frequencies to really quantify them. After all, I'm trying to make intermodulation distortion measurements, so any significant distortion on the audio signals coming into the device under test will just muddle in with the test results. And speaking of signal cleanliness, running an open PC board off a power supply is definitely not a good idea. All kinds of stray RF and noise can end up getting into the signals. So I really need to put this in a metal enclosure, run it off a of battery power, and have output connections go to shielded cables. Adding up all of these shortcomings means a complete redesign and rebuild is needed. I did my research and I ran across two candidate circuits. The first design is shown on page 7.14 in EMRFD, my usual go-to. This circuit includes low pass filters, but there's no balance control and there's only basic control over the output signal level. The second design candidate is actually included in the appendices of the ARRL test procedures manual. And like the EMRFD design, it also has low pass filters, but adds a nice step attenuator to the output. So I'm gonna go with this design. Here's my version of it drawn in KiCad. I pretty much drew it verbatim from the ARRL design, but I did add more bypass caps at each of the op amp power feeds. And I added series resistors with the lamps that I'll talk about later. Note that my version doesn't show the attenuator. I'm going to implement that directly on a rotary switch using leaded resistors. Now I did flirt with the idea of doing an LT spice simulation, but I bailed on that because these oscillators are classic wean bridges that use small incandescent lamps to stabilize the feedback and therefore stabilize the amplitude of the signal. There's not a standard model of an incandescent lamp in LT spice. Now there are several good references online for how to create a model, but all of them are terribly complex, and I just didn't feel like going down that rabbit hole. Plus, I gotta keep in mind that this circuit is published by ARRL, so that gives a lot of credibility that it should work. Moving on, here's the board layout. I'm mostly surface mount here, except for the trimmers, a couple of electrolytics, and of course the two lamps. Even though KiCad shows them as LEDs, they're not, they're bulbs. Now the ARRL design has four 2 nanofarad caps in it that are spec to be polystyrene, which back in the day was done for thermal stability. But here in 2023, I'm easily able to get those values in stable COG material in a 1206 SMT package. So that's what I went with. I had boards fabbed for this project rather than make them myself, mainly because I wasn't in a big hurry and I had other things going on. As usual, they turned out nice. Yes indeed, you can get the classic TL-082 op-amp in an SOIC8 package. 
And here it is, all populated and ready to test out. I've temporarily soldered on some controls and connections for the bring up test. So let's apply some power and have a first look at its performance. All right, I powered it up and it worked right out of the gate, no issues. And in order to power it up, since this needs two nine volt batteries, the easiest thing to do is use my Heath 2718 power supply. It's got two independent outputs that I can daisy chain together and very easily get plus nine and minus nine volts. And if you were really studying the schematic on the board here, you will have noticed it's a classic split rail or, or dual power required plus nine and minus nine volt design. So no problem, you can do that with two nine volt batteries. And of course I can do it with that power supply, no problem. I'm using the Siglent to look at the output and it worked right away, no issues. The only adjustment I have to, to make here is to set RV1 and RV2, those are the two 500 ohm trimmers in the feedback for the, the first two op amps. Now the instructions said to adjust those to get pin seven of U1 and U2 to about 500 millivolts RMS. Now I had to go higher about one volt RMS. I'll show on screen what it looked like real quick. Uh, it just wasn't stable at half a volt. And I think that's likely because I'm not using the specified lamps. I just could not find 25 milliamp, 12 volt miniature lamps. The closest I could find were 40 millivolt, 12, 12 volt amp, I'm sorry, 40 milliamp, get my units right here, 40 milliamp 12 volt lamps. And I was a little concerned that those would draw too much current. That's why I added those series resistors I mentioned earlier on the schematic, that's R1 and R2. I put a provision on there to put a little bit of extra resistance just in case I needed to drop the current down. So I tried it initially with about 50 ohms. The op amps were just not stable. I fiddled around with a couple of other values and finally <laughs> I just took them out. I just put in zero ohm jumpers and I was able to set the bias. Um, like I said, I did go higher at about one volt RMS instead of uh, half a volt. And I don't think that's gonna make any difference at all. The device is stable. The oscillators settle real quick as I'll show here in a moment when I demonstrate turning the waveforms on and off. All right, I moved the camera over just a little bit so the scope looks a little larger. And of course I'm showing on screen now just one audio tone. This is the lower frequency tone. It's coming out at about 702 hertz. Let me turn it off and turn on the higher frequency tone. And you see that little settling taking place there. That's the Wien Bridge oscillator in action. Now it's at 1817 hertz or 1817 or 1 1.8 kilohertz. So that's perfectly fine. That's it's far enough away from the 700 uh, or so hertz tone and they're not harmonically related to each other so that'll work just fine and as I just mentioned as I turn these on and off you can see the bridge um, settling in place to the amplitude of each signal taking uh, half a second or so to stabilize and of course I can turn them both on at the same time and get that kind of chaotic looking signal which this isn't going to look right in the time domain of course in the frequency domain we'd see two distinct audio tones there and then as far as controls go this control is the balance so I can adjust that to affect the magnitude between the two signals so I could adjust the lower frequency one a little bit higher than the high frequency if I wanted to without affecting it and then this is the overall level so this is unlike the volume control for the whole thing and of course I don't have the the adjustable uh, switch in there for the step attenuator that'll come later but that's just the overall gain control for it so what I think I want to do now is I'm going to just pick one of the signals and I'm going to reset the scope to slow the time base way down so we can see exactly what that wean bridge looks like as it oscillates and settles down Okay, I moved the camera yet again, and I'm going to set the scope for single shot mode. And I've also got the time base set here at 50 milliseconds. That might not come through, but it's 50 milliseconds per division for the time base. So let me turn on the low frequency tone and have a look at it here. And there we go. We can see that wing bridge in action as... It first turns on, the bulb of course is cold, its resistance is low, so the amplitude's higher as the bulb heats up. It kind of overcompensates a bit because this particular control circuit or control loop that's in here rather with the feedback is a little bit underdamped, so it's going to oscillate a little bit until it settles down. So real, realistically, it has settled down after about 12 divisions or so 
and again at 50 milliseconds that'd be 600 milliseconds for the amplitude to settle in and if we really want to look at it if you turn on the cursors here like I've done and the period of this oscillation seems to be about 75 ish milliseconds and it's pretty consistent as it settles down so kind of neat that's the wing bridge in action and of course it'll do the same thing for the higher frequency tone let me reset the scope here to single shot and turn on the higher frequency one and its amplitude's a little less because I've got the balance kind of uh, unbalanced between the two but you can see the same behavior starts out for um, a brief period until the bulb warms up then there's a little bit of that same uh, oil under damping there where the circuit oscillates until it settles into place so kind of neat and that's again the way a wean bridge is going to work but it's going to thermally stabilize there and I'm going to have a nice good consistent amplitude of both signals. Of course there's more than one hardware solution out there to generate two audio tones. You can also generate them directly through a sound card or record them in advance in say a program like Audacity. So lots of ways to achieve the same result but for me there's definitely a bit of nostalgia in taking a decades old circuit design like this that's got two Wien bridge oscillators in it and trying to make it work. Now looking ahead to the next episode, I'm going to take that circuit board assembly and put it in an enclosure and hopefully button it all up and have a chance to test it out with my Tiny SA with some of the circuits that are in that home-built transmitter and see if I can get a better measurement of the IMD. So thanks very much for watching this episode and until next time, bye for now.